respected listeners, Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi would say about the tongue, one of the wonders, that the tongue is one of the wonders of the wonderful creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has blessed us with this tongue to express our feelings, our emotions, our love, shahada, many good things. But the tongue is also capable of expressing many bad things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us conscious of our tongue, to protect our tongue, not to unleash it whenever we want to. He has put our tongue inside the two gates, two lips, inside the 32 locks, the teeth. It's a boneless piece of flesh, small flesh, capable of breaking the strongest of the bonds and family ties. Medicine has discovered anti-venom for the most deadliest poisonous snake on the face of the earth. But no medicine has yet discovered the cue for the sting and the bite that comes from the human tongue. That is why Rasulullah guided us gave us guiding words, advised us. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yakul khayran aw liyasmut. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who believes in Allah and the last day, let him or her say good things. If they cannot do that, let them be quiet. Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, O Prophet of Allah, my tongue is sharp against my family members. It's sharp. I hurt my family members with my tongue. I'm afraid it will take me to hellfire. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what happened to istighfar? What happened to reciting astaghfirullah, seeking forgiveness of Allah? I myself say astaghfirullah 100 times a day. Said Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a man like Abu Bakr, the title given to him by Rasulullah as Siddiq, the truthful. One time he was sitting in his room, holding his tongue, reprimanding, rebuking his tongue. So now Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala who walks in and he says, Ya Abu Bakr, what are you doing? May Allah have mercy on you. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala who says, Inna hadha awradani al-mawarid. This tongue has taken me to places of destruction. The slip of a tongue, the slip of a foot. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the slip of a tongue, the slip of a tongue is worse than the slip of a foot. When a person slips and falls, he can break his bones. But when a person slips his tongue and unleashes it, he can break the hearts of the people. It is easier to put a break. It is easier to put a break on a 20 wheeler tractor trailer than to put a break on this boneless piece of flesh inside our mouth. Most of the people that enter paradise, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, most of the people that enter paradise are because is because of the fear of Allah because of the fear of Allah and their good akhlaq, good conduct. 
And the most of the people that enter hellfire, said Prophet wasallam. most of the people that enter hellfire is because of the usage of their tongues and private parts. Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala who comes to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, how can I attain salvation? How can I attain forgiveness and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him, control your tongue. Control your tongue. Stay in your homes and weep over your sins. Aswad al-Akram radiallahu ta'ala who comes to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Prophet of Allah, advise me. I can't, O Prophet of Allah, advise me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, this hadith fits on me and you so much in the information age and the technological age we are living in. He says, O oh, Rasulullah says, O oh, Aswad al-Akram, control your hands, control your hands, constantly on smartphones, respective listeners. Even waking up, the first thing Rasulullah would say, as soon as his eyes would open up in the morning, Alhamdulillahi ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. All praises be to Allah who has given me life after death. Unto him I'm returning back. Or oh, thank Allah for giving us life. Because sleep is the sister of death, said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah puts our souls back when we wake up. And that's how we wake up. The first thing that should come out of our tongue should be thanking Allah rather than checking the messages on our smartphones. Control your hands, said Prophet ﷺ. He said, O Prophet of Allah, I can't control my hands. I can't control my hands, O Prophet of Allah. Rasulullah ﷺ said, if you can't control your hands, control your tongue. He said, I can't control my tongue either, O Prophet of Allah. I can't control my tongue. Then Rasulullah ﷺ said, if you cannot control your hands, then do only good with your hands. And if you cannot control your tongue, say only good things with your tongue. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, every morning, every morning, all the organs of the body, the heart, the hands, the feet, the ears, the eyes, all of the organs of the body humble themselves in front of the tongue and say, Fear Allah in regards to us, O tongue. Fear Allah in regards to us. In istakam to istakam na wani wajaj to wajaj na o kamaqal. For we are as you are. If you are straight, we are straight. If you are bent and crooked, we are bent and crooked. لا يستقيم إيمان عبد حتى يستقيم قلبه ولا يستقيم قلبه حتى يستقيم لسانه أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said your iman your faith your iman will not be straight until your heart is straight your heart will not be straight until your tongue is straight Many of the faults, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, most of the faults people make is because of their tongues. I guarantee a paradise, said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I guarantee a magnificent palace in paradise, on the outskirts of paradise, for who gives up argument, even though he or she is right. And I promise a magnificent palace in the center of paradise, who gives up lying even in joke, does not lie in his jokes. And I promise a magnificent palace in Jannatul Firdaus for those who have good akhlaq. May Allah make us among those respected listeners. Akhuli khuli haza astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfirullahi wa ghafurur rahim.
Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulihil kareem Amma ba'd <clears throat> Our respected Pious predecessors They knew what was at stake with this tongue And they went to extreme precautions To withhold their tongue To use their tongue because they knew exactly what Prophet Sallallahu said in al abd la bil kalima min ridwanillah sometimes a person says a small word a small sentence thinking it's very trivial and small but it is great in the eyes of Allah it gives Allah so much pleasure that Allah puts him in the highest abode in paradise and sometimes a person says in al abd kalima min sakhatillah he he says something which he thinks it's insignificant and trivial but in the eyes of allah it is very grievous and allah puts him into the pit of the hellfire prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a person comes this close and arms length in this life in this life a person comes this close and arms length to paradise but because he says such words in, with his tongue, Allah takes him far away from paradise. And the elders knew about this. And they took a lot of precautions for their tongue. So in Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahmatullah it was his habit, one of the great pious predecessors, the great muhaddith of Islam. It was his habit to do hajj every alternate year. He was going for Hajj in the desert, in a distance. He saw a dark figure moving. He went close to the figure and he saw a woman completely covered in black clothes. He, he went to her and he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. She responded from the Quran, Salamun qawlam min rabbi rahim. From the Quran. And he said, what are you doing here all alone? She said again from the Quran, Whoever Allah misguides cannot come to the straight path. Whoever goes astray cannot be guided. From this I realized she's lost. I asked her, where are you going? What is your destination? She said from the Quran, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al harami il al masjid al aqsa. From this I realized she has already done, done her Hajj. She's going to the third, third Haram Masjid Al-Aqsa. I asked her how long you've been over here lost. She again quoted from the Quran, Thalatha Layalin Sabiyya. From three consecutive nights, continuous nights, I've been staying over here. I took out my food, put it in front of her. She said, then I asked her, what do you eat and drink? I don't see any food with you. She again quoted it from the Quran, He is the one who feeds me and gives me water. Then I put food in front of her. She said, From the Quran, that fast until the nighttime breaks. I told her, you don't have to fast, you're traveling. Allah has made it easy for travelers. She said from the Quran again, but if you fast, it is better if you but knew about it. I was shocked and amazed at the responses of this woman. I asked her, I told her, Lima mithlu ma, ma Why don't you speak to me in the same common language I'm speaking to you, normal language? She again said from the Quran, ma min illa That he or she does not utter a single word, but the angels are there recording it. Then I asked her, what people are you from? Which tribe are you from? She again quoted from the Quran, Do not ask of the things which you have no knowledge. Verily your heart, your hearing, your sight will be questioned on the day of judgment. I said, my apologies, I didn't mean to ask you a personal question. She said, from the Quran, 
يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ No blame upon you. May Allah forgive you. Then I asked her, If you love me, I can help you join the caravan you have lost. She said, again from the Quran, وَمَا تَقْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمْهُ اللَّهُ Whatever you good you do, Allah knows about it. I lowered the camel. As I was lowering the camel, she said from the Quran, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُدُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Tell the believing men to lower their gaze. I lowered my gaze. I moved my face away from her. As she was about to mount on the camel, she was a stranger to the camel. The camel moved. Her clothes ripped. She again recited from the Quran, وَمَا أَسَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُسِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ That no calamity affliction comes upon you because of your own deeds and actions. She mounted on the camel, reciting the words, the dua from the Quran. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي سَخْرَ لَنَا هَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لَهُ مُخْرِنِينَ وَإِنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا لَمُنْقَلِبُونَ I took the rein of the camel. To keep myself busy, I started shouting and walking. And she said from the Quran, again, وَقْصِدْ فِي مَشِّكْ وَقْدُدْ مِنْ سَوْتِكْ Walk on the earth moderately, modestly, and lower your voice. I lowered my voice and I started reciting poetry to keep myself busy. She again said from the, from the Quran, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Recite from the Quran what Allah has made it easy for you. I stopped the camel, paused, looked at her with my eyes lowered. I said, أُوْتِيْتِ خَيْرٍ كَثِيرًا Allah has blessed you with a lot of good. She again said from the Quran, وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ that none receive admonition, nasiha, advice, except the people of understanding. Then I asked her, do you have a husband? She said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tus'alu an ashiya in tubda lakum an tasukkum. Oh, you who believe, do not ask the questions which can get into you, get, in, get, get into you, into trouble. I locked up my lips. I said, I better be quiet. I caught up with the camera. I caught up with the caravan. I went to the caravan and I told, told her, do you know anybody in the caravan? She again recited from the Quran, Al-Malu wal banoon Zinatul Hayati Dunya. From this I realized she has children in the caravan. I said, what are they doing in this caravan? For me to identify them. She again quoted from the Quran, Wa'alamad wa bin najbihum yahtadun. Allah talks about the stars, how they guide the people in the deserts. From this I realized her sons are the guides in the caravan. I asked her, what are the names? She again quoted from the Quran. From this I realized her sons' names are Isa, Musa, and Ibrahim. I went in front of the caravan and shouted, Ya Musa, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Yahya, three handsome young men with their faces beautiful like the 14th moon. They come forward galloping on their horses. As soon as they came, she said, From the Surah Al-Kahf, she says, go to the town, bring pure halal food for, for, for this person. They came, put food in front of me, and, I, and she said, Eat and drink for the good you have done in the past days from the Quran, she recited. I said, by Allah, by Allah, this food is haram on me until you tell me who this woman is. She again said from the Quran, We do not feed you except for the pleasure of Allah. We do not need any thanks or gratefulness from you. I again said, I'm not going to touch this food until you tell me who this woman is. The son said, Hadihi ummuna. This is our mother. For 40 years, for 40 years, she has not spoken anything outside the Quran, fearing one word she might say, and the angels will write against her. Fearing one word she might say outside the Quran, and the angels will write against her. Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahmatullah says, it was my turn to speak from the Qur'an now. I said from the Qur'an, Surely Allah gives His grace to whomever He pleases. He is the owner of the mighty grace. This is one story, respected listeners. There were many men and women who would speak only nothing but the words of the Quran. Allah says, We have not left anything in the Quran which is not there. Everything is there in the Quran. 
all we need to do is to dive into the ocean, into the depths of the Quran, respected listeners, and pick up the treasures Allah has put hidden in them. May Allah protect my tongue. May Allah protect all our tongues. And may Allah make our tongues the means for us to enter paradise. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa khina adhab al-nar. Rabbana la tazi khulubana ba'adai thadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma. إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وأقيموا الصلاة